Hey there! Is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So, no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So, welcome to church. Different, instead of it being a week-long vacation Bible school, it's going to start on the first Tuesday of August, August the 4th, I believe. It's going to start at 6 o'clock. And instead of it running all week long, it's going to run for five weeks. And it's going to run into the first week of September. And so we're going to do, do it that way. And it's a family night, VBS. We encourage parents to be with their children. And we're going to make it a fun-filled thing, not only for the children. I'm sure we're going to make it fun for the parents as well. So um, also, if you haven't heard, we have a church newsletter. Uh, we have it in both formats. We have a digital where you can see it online or subscribe to it or you can get a printed copy. I know some people prefer to have something that they can hold in their hand. If you like a July church newsletter, back there on the welcome desk is a newsletter. All right? So who's ready to worship this morning? All right, let's stand. Psalms 27 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. And one thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all of the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. Shouts of joy. Thank you. I will sing and make music to the Lord. We are glad you are here with us this morning in his sanctuary or if you're online, in your living room, wherever you're at this morning. We have, a, we have a way to praise Jesus and that is just by surrendering and saying you can have it all, Lord, because when we surrender, that's when we have the victory. So if you will, wherever you're at this morning, whether it's in this pew or whether it's in your living room, if you will just close your eyes and will you just welcome the Holy Spirit into you this morning and see what he has for you. We're going to sing a, call, a song called The Father's House. My favorite line in the song is, check your shame at the door. Shame doesn't belong when the Father is here. There's no need to worry. There's no need to fret. But instead of worrying, let's worship. Let's worship our worries away this morning. So will you sing with us? Jesus, we welcome you here. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun. I'm telling you, won't define me, but that's what my father does, yeah. Oh, fail you won't define me, but that's what my father does. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, here in the Father's house, check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house.
and came the journey's where you are you never wanted perfect you just wanted my heart and the story isn't over if the story isn't good i felt you never find a when the father's in her yeah i felt you never find a when the father's in the world come home to help us find home love is on the move when the father's in the room prison doors fling wide the dead come to life yeah love is on the move when the father's in the room whoa, whoa. miracles take place the cynical find faith and love is great Of 
Jesus, I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. He got Jesus. How could I want more? I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I got Jesus. How could I want more? I got Jesus. want to go back and I want to hear that chorus one more time but instead of us singing it I want you guys to sing it because we need to be thankful for Jesus Christ I'm undone by the mercy sing it Jesus I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord I'm restored I'm undone by the mercy Jesus I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord I'm restored and made right He got a hold of my life I got Jesus Could I want more? I'm undone by the mercy Jesus I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord Restored in me, right? He got a hold of my life. I got Jesus. Could I want more? I got Jesus. Could I want more? Last time, I got Jesus. Could I want more? sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope with no place to begin Oh, when your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began As was redeemed, only beauty remains. My orphan heart was given a name. Oh, my morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Sing it, church. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You had made me new. Now life begins with you. Oh, it's your endless love pouring down. Chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom, he faithfully bore. Oh, he canceled my debt and he called me his friend. That's when death was arrested in my life. Play. 
laid on a criminal's cross Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost But then Jesus arose with our freedom to sing that third verse because that third verse is my favorite verse of all and as we do that I'm going to invite our pastor up and we're going to invite Gus and let him let them come up and join us in worship this morning because it's that second part of that verse is my favorite and you know when when Jesus died on the cross I'm sure Satan was laughing and he's probably thinking yeah I've won, but we all know that's not true. Amen. Because Jesus had a little surprise for Satan himself. I see every display on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. Here we go. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hell. That's when death was arrested in my life began. Oh, oh your grace so free. Yeah. Washes over me. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. It's your sermon y'all can be seated by the way <laughs> I wanted to let you guys know of a of an amazing week that we had as a mission team just a couple weeks ago so with COVID obviously we could not go to North Carolina like we had planned to this summer but yet we still had an amazing opportunity to serve people in our own community we called it reach at home 
And before we, before I show you what happened, uh, I just want to recognize the people that helped make this happen. See, because normally what would happen is you all would, would give us donations, and then we would go on our trip, and we would go help people in another community in another state. But our church, this church, stepped up, and you all made this happen. First thing I want to do is list the team that was here for the week. And if you, when I say your name, if you're here, just stand up. Pierce Bolin, Allie Stack, Carly MacArthur, Andrew Stack, Rob MacArthur, Matt Ragsdale, Caitlin Moses, Karen Moses, Peyton Moses, they took over, y'all, Rachel Overly, and myself. And then we also had uh, our, our assistant care team that provided meals for us throughout the week. And y'all, I'm so grateful for that because y'all know I like food and you know that the students like food. So if you were any part of that and if you've served any sort of meal, cookies, lemonade, whatever, uh, if you want to stand, you can. But if not, I'm going to give you all a standing O myself. Can we just give them everybody a hand? Because listen, y'all, it was, it was an amazing week. As a youth pastor, this is not something that you plan for. It's having camp at home. Uh, but nonetheless, it was one of the best weeks of my life. Um, I bonded so much with our students, and our students got to serve people in our own community. I'm so proud of each and every one of my students and this team that showed up to serve people in our own community. So I just want to reflect and show you guys what an amazing uh, opportunity we had and the amazing week that we had uh, this, this last couple weeks. So if you'll just pay attention to our screen, here's what happened at Reach at Home 2020.
At this time, would you stand for the reading of our scripture for today? While you are standing, I want to remind those that are, uh, uh, our offering will be taken at the end of the service. There are baskets out there. For those of you that are watching online, there is a place that you can go online on our Facebook page, or not on our Facebook page, but on our website, which is www.graceonthehill.org, and there is a place to put an offering. You can give online. Our scripture today is taken from Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 through 15, and Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. This is how Matthew recorded the words of Jesus. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others of their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. And in chapter 18, verses 21 through 35, in the story of the parable of the unmerciful servant. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? And Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what, he had, ha what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brothers or sisters from your heart. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. At this time, we will pray for Pastor Scott for our service. Heavenly Father, we just ask for your Holy Spirit to, to come on Pastor Scott as he brings us your word. We ask you to fill this place with your spirit. Help us to have listening hearts and ears. Help us to find something in this sermon today that we can take to make us stronger Christians. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Can you hear me now? Good morning. Ooh. Everybody can hear me now, can't you? Well, we're continuing in our time together. Last week, we, are, uh, we began a series on things that Jesus never said. There are some things that are oftentimes quoted as if they are... Uh, scripture. We say them to one another in church. A lot of people hold them dear as if somehow or another uh, they are holy writ, but they're really not. Last week we looked at the fact that you can't fix you. That's why G Jesus came. That's why the Father sent the Son, that we can't fix ourselves, that we owe a debt that we can't pay. And so it, it, the saying is, God helps those who help themselves. That's not scriptural. God helps us because we can't help ourselves. Well, today we're going to talk about forgiveness. Forgiveness. Now, I realize that there are three things in church that are difficult to talk about. One of them is money. One of them is politics. And one of them is forgiveness. And so I want you all to take out your checkbooks right now. And no, just kidding. Uh, we're going to talk about forgiveness this morning. So... Um, 
the reason I think that forgiveness is so difficult to talk about, is such a difficult, sensitive subject, is because we have all been hurt at some point in our life. All of us have had some sort of event that has caused us pain. And as a result of that, we have all felt uh, this sense where um, we are able to harbor that in a way that we can almost hold that over someone else, the person that hurt us. Now, in, in retrospect or on the other side of that coin, we need to also understand that if we have been hurt by others, there's a high likelihood that we have also hurt someone else, whether that it was intentionally or unintentionally. And so forgiveness is one of those subjects that are, is difficult. We don't really talk about it much, but it is really a big part of our Christian journey. And I've, I have uh, talked to people and, and I myself have dealt with the concept that it's okay for us not to forgive someone if. And when you say that if, you can put anything you want behind that. And it kind of justifies to ourself or it allows us to believe that harboring unforgiveness is acceptable before God. But Jesus never said that. As a matter of fact, in the scriptures that Gus read for us this morning, there's very, it's very clear that for the follower of Jesus Christ, that forgiveness is not an option for us. As a matter of fact, for the Christian, forgiveness is given based upon the fact that forgiveness has been received. That we forgive because we are forgiven. We forgive because we have been forgiven. As a follower of Jesus Christ, we understand that God has extended to us great grace. That we understand that we have trespassed against God, that we have sinned against God, and we have a sin debt that we can't repay. That's what we talked about last week, that we have sin in our lives and we can't bridge that on our own. And rather that God paid that price for us. Romans 6.23 says that the wages of sin is what? It's death. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life in Christ Jesus. And so what we know is that because we have sinned, the wages of our sin is death. That's what we deserve. But rather through the grace and the mercy of God, uh, through Jesus Christ, we have been forgiven. And so therefore, we are to be a people that forgive based on the fact that we have been forgiven. That's what the entire parable of the unmerciful servant rests upon. We are in this parable somewhere. We're not, we're not the master, but we are the servant. And we have all come before God with a debt that we can't pay. And we uh, lay that before God and we ask for forgiveness. And God is faithful and unjust to forgive us and cleanse us of our unrighteousness. But sometimes we act like the unmerciful servant. When we go out and we harbor ill will towards others, and we're uh, not willing to extend that forgiveness, that's what it's like for us. We find ourselves coming before God, harboring that ill will, and the words that, that are shared in the parable that Jesus gives are not pleasant words. And they're not easy words for us to live with. Neither are the words that, that we find uh, at the end of the Lord's Prayer. Because it tells us there that if we do not forgive, what? We are, we're not, we're not forgiven. Peter goes to Jesus and says, hey, what if, if somebody sins against me, how many times should I forgive them? Seven times? That's not a random number. For uh, the, the rabbinical law mandated 
that if someone trans transgressed against you, that you are to forgive them three times. And then the fourth, you're no longer obligated to forgive. That's the law they went by, three times. So Peter says, seven? So he doubled it and added one, right? And Jesus says, no, not seven. It's this, he, he gives a number, but it, what Jesus is really saying is, there's not a, a limit on the amount of forgiveness that we are to offer to others. So we forgive because we have been forgiven. Secondly, as a follower of Christ, forgiveness is not optional for us. It's not optional. We forgive out of obedience. We forgive out of obedience. It's an essential part of our faith journey. We don't forgive because it feels good necessarily. We don't forgive um, all the time because we think it's the right thing to do. And it's certainly hardly ever the easy thing to do depending on how deep we've been hurt. But rather we are to forgive out of a sense of obedience. Jesus tells us that we must forgive others so that we can be forgiven. So we are mandated to be a people of forgiveness. It's just like any other aspect. We are mandated to love. We're mandated to forgive. There's no option. We can't step back and say, you know what? I'm going to be a follower of Jesus Christ, and, and I, I'm going to believe that he can save my soul. But, you know, when it comes to certain things in Scripture, I'm just going to set them aside, and I'm just going to live my life and, and assume that it's okay with God. And one of those things that I'm going to set aside is my willingness to be a person of forgiveness. Well, there's going to be a time when we're going to answer to God for the things that we've done. And if we have been a people that have been unwilling to forgive, then God is going to call us on that. We're accountable to God for forgiveness. We forgive out of obedience. When Peter comes to Jesus and says, Lord, how many times, how many times must I forgive? And Jesus says, and he says seven, and then Jesus ups the ante there is an assumption there on Peter's part, isn't there? He doesn't ask Jesus, should I forgive? He asks Jesus, how often should I forgive? There's an assumption there that, that is that God expects his people to be a people that forgive. As a matter of fact, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19 says this, that we are given a ministry of reconciliation. That part of what we do as followers of Jesus Christ is we help reconcile relationships. We, we work with one another. We realize uh, that there's going to be times when things will happen whenever there are people in a relationship that is going to mandate a need for forgiveness, Right? I mean, things happen. Sometimes we say things we didn't mean to say. Sometimes we do things that we didn't realize would cause issues. Sometimes we fail to do or say things that we should. And in those moments, forgiveness is something that we have to be willing to share. And that way we can have um, relationships. And that's a ministry. And that's a ministry of reconciliation. Third, we forgive to release ourselves. We forgive to release ourselves and not the other way around. Forgiveness is a gift that we give ourselves. And a lot of times we don't really realize. To harbor forgiveness is to live under a yoke of anger, resentment, hurt, bitterness, and pain. And when we live under that yoke, we begin to develop uh, calluses and we begin to build walls and we become very skeptical and we're always looking for the other shoe to drop and we're waiting for, you know, what, whatever else is coming and we're very leery of dealing with other people because if we've been hurt once or twice or three or four times by some, someone, we're, we're not really going to be open to having a relationship with them. And all of that develops into hate. And we live under that yoke of hate. And as a follower of Jesus Christ, there's no place in our life for that. 
And we think somehow or another in our own minds that, that we have power and control as long as we have resentment, as long as I hold over you the fact that I'm mad at you because of what you've done to me. We think we're in control, but what really happens is we're not in control. They are. I have dealt with and talked with people that have harbored unforgiveness for so long that they don't even remember what they were mad about in the first place. Have you been there? Do you know somebody like that? They're so upset about something that happened so long ago that they don't even remember what it was, but whatever it was hurt them, and so they've held on to the hurt, but they forgot the trespass. Even more, I've talked to people that have held on to unforgiveness for so long that the person that they're mad at is no longer alive. They're still mad at somebody that's not even physically among us anymore. And yet they're laboring under the yoke of unforgiveness and bitterness and anger and pain. So tell me who's in control in that situation. We need to understand that when we begin to develop a process where we are forgiving one another, that we are able to really release ourselves from a lot of those things. Unforgiveness, it's like an illness or a cancer for your soul. It, it depletes you of things like joy and peace and love all of which are part of the fruit of the Spirit. Do you understand what's happening when we're dwelling in that type of lifestyle? We're actually hindering our ability to grow uh, the fruit of the Spirit, which means the Spirit is not able to work in our lives the way that the Spirit desires to. And it's because we're harboring unforgiveness. Oftentimes, uh, we harbor unforgiveness and the other person may not even know it. We're just mad. We're, we're hurt because maybe they didn't speak to us at the post office or they didn't wave at us when they drove by the house or whatever it might be. And, and the other person may not even know that there's anything wrong. And so we need to understand, we just need to release people from the things that, that have hurt us. It's part of who we are. To withhold forgiveness is to deny being forgiven and to remain in our sins. That's the message that I get very clearly from Matthew's gospel. To hold on to, to unforgiveness is to deny being forgiven and is to remain. So we forgive to be forgiven. We remain separated from the ability of God to work in our lives. And I'm not even just talking about the fact that the Spirit of God is unable to work in ways that God desires to. But Jesus is very clear in Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. This comes after the Lord's Prayer that if we don't forgive, we're not forgiven. And so we need to really take a hard look at ourselves and make sure that we understand and ask ourselves, is it worth harboring bitterness and ill will towards someone? Is, is our eternal salvation worth that? And if it's not, then you're just going to have to let it go. We just need to learn to let it go. Finally, we forgive because it's the life that we choose. Forgiveness is a life lived more than an action taken. Forgiveness is a life lived more than an action taken. Listen, it's a choice we make. We just have to make the decision in our mind that we are going to work towards forgiveness in, in every way. Is it easy? No. Is it, is it difficult? It's going to be at various levels, depending on how deep the hurt is. And, and sometimes that choice is a process where daily we have to get up and we have to remind ourselves that we're going to live in forgiveness today because whatever happened was so bad. 
It's a choice that we make. It's a life that we live. And it's difficult, but it's necessary for your own personal spiritual well-being. So forgiveness is what we do because it's who we are as followers of Jesus Christ. Now, let me just share with you real quick as I close a couple of thoughts on forgiveness, what forgiveness doesn't mean. Forgiveness does not mean that the slate has been wiped clean and you have to forget everything that happened. A lot of times we hear the words forgive and forgive and forget, right? But here's, here's the thing. You can forgive someone for what they've done to you, but depending on who the individual is and what happened to you, it is unwise to forget. If you were abused by someone and you forgive them for what they have done to you, that doesn't mean that you have to forget what happened. Because in doing so, you might place yourself back into a situation where it could cause you harm or your family harm. So you can forgive and you can love, but you have to be smart as well, right? God, God understands the difference between forgiving, releasing somebody and forgetting and acting as if nothing ever happened. So we need to understand that. Forgiveness may not also mean that you, got, that you and whoever that person you have forgiven will be best friends again. You can love them you, you, in the name of Christ. You can forgive them. Uh, you can release them. You can be uh, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to, to be best friends again. It may mean through reconciliation that that's the case. But it may not because that other person has to live in forgiveness as well. A lot of times we offer forgiveness to people and, um, and if they don't receive it or if they don't live into that lifestyle, then reconciliation doesn't happen. It takes both of you in order for that to happen. So forgive, allow the spirit to work in your heart and in your mind, and then leave it up to God to deal with whatever's going to happen next. Forgiveness isn't easy. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's one of the most, I think, one of the most challenging aspects of being a follower of Jesus Christ. But it's also one of the most essential aspects of being a follower of Jesus Christ. This morning, as we conclude our time together, uh, as, as we did last week, I'm going to offer you the opportunity. And I, I was told Wayman did this too, so you all know how it goes. But if you're in-house... Uh, this side of the prayer rail is open. If, you, if you're here this morning and, and you're like, you know, I hear what you're saying, preacher, but you don't live next door to my neighbors or you aren't related to my cousin or my brother. Or I hear what you're saying, but no, you have not had this happen to you. I hear you. And I know it's hard, but in order for you to live the life that God has created for you, you have to take a first step. The first step is just, Lord, help me to be a person of forgiveness. Help me to let this be a part of who I am. Teach me to be a forgiving person. You take that step and allow the spirit to begin to work within you. And if that's something, or if you're here this morning and you're thinking, you know, you know I've been harboring something for long enough and it's time to let that go then maybe this this is a time to come up here and pray uh, at the altar rail you're welcome to do that and if you're here this morning and you would like for me or Luke or Gus to pray with you uh, then you're welcome to come up and we're going to be on this side over here and if you want one of us to pray with you we would love to do that if you're at home and you're watching and, and I know that, that we're not there with you in your living room or wherever you're watching this. That doesn't mean that you can't pray. This is an opportunity as we sing this closing song to listen to the, the words, but also to, to spend that time in prayer. Make your couch an altar and just allow God to work in you wherever you're at. Let us stand together as we sing 
our closing hymn and our altar rails are open for you to come and pray.
As we dismiss, I don't have any idea what that was. Is it me? I'll be real still. As we dismiss, <laughs> we're going to do it with some static, but we're going to do it anyway. May you go forth in the love and the peace of Jesus Christ. And don't. Don't carry the burden anymore. Allow the Spirit of God to release you and set you free. Be safe this week. Go in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.